my name is JC. In April of 2022, I was diagnosed with chronic inflammatory response syndrome, also known as SIRS, mold illness, or biotoxin illness. I am not a provider, but I am a very experienced patient. I've done about six months of the protocol. I've done a ton of research. I even read the freaking textbook. So for a little more background on SIRS, SIRS or chronic inflammatory response syndrome happens when someone who is genetically predisposed to being really bad at eliminating a biotoxin encounters that biotoxin. And the downstream effects wreak havoc on the gut biome and metabolism. The first part of the treatment protocol helps you eliminate the biotoxins. I've done a whole video on the treatment protocol, so definitely check that out for more details. But a lot of the protocol is focused on fixing the downstream impact of SIRS. One impact that SIRS has on the body is it lowers MSH or melanocyte stimulating hormone. This hormone is responsible for a lot of different things in the body, but one of them is regulating tight junctions in the gut. So with low MSH, you can present with leaky gut type symptoms. A lot of SIRS patients also experience the generation of anti-gliadin antibodies as an immune response. These antibodies are commonly known for celiac patients as causing celiac disease. And in SIRS patients, this can manifest as gluten intolerance and also dairy intolerance. The anti-gliadin antibodies can actually attack dairy proteins the same way it would attack gluten protein. Part of the treatment for low MSH is avoiding gluten and if you're sensitive to it dairy. Another common symptom that SIRS patients experience are mast cell activation syndrome or histamine reactions. Mast cells are white blood cells in your body and they, in response to some sort of antigen, in this case the biotoxin, release histamines as an inflammatory response. With SIRS, it's like the biotoxin is constantly triggering these histamine reactions until eventually you start being triggered by benign things. Your whole system is just on edge. It can be something as simple as a bite of steak or a lit candle. With SIRS, you're not able to have a normal immune response to outside pathogens, and so you may end up with a lot of different co-infections. Some examples are SIBO, H. pylori, candida, staph, and even starch sensitivities. Another downstream impact is effects on your VEGF. This helps regulate oxygenation in your bloodstream. To correct VEGF, it is recommended that you pursue an exercise protocol and eat a low amylose diet. Finally, it's recommended that SIRS patients avoid mycotoxins in foods. And some examples of foods that might have mycotoxins are things like cured meats, cheese, and coffee. Personally, I follow a carnivore elimination approach. I was actually doing a carnivore diet before I was diagnosed with SIRS. I have found it very helpful through the treatment process, and from what I've heard from providers, it seems like carnivores are better able to tolerate treatment in general. The nice thing about a carnivore diet is it completely eliminates plant toxins as a variable for why you might not be feeling well. It's also naturally low amylose and low mold. And for people who are having mast cell responses or histamine reactions, meat tends to be a really neutral food. I highly recommend Nutrition with Judy's book, The Carnivore Cure. If you haven't checked it out, it is just packed, it's so dense with so much information, all about the carnivore diet and using it as an elimination approach. I'm going to do a whole separate video on all of the impact that SIRS has to your metabolism in the sense of weight gain. I think that for people who have stubborn weight gain, there's a ton of downstream impact in terms of how SIRS impacts your metabolic health. It makes you leptin resistant. It's hard to mobilize fat stores. You're lethargic or immobile. There's just so much to unpack there. It needs its own video. An added benefit of the carnivore diet is that it is naturally a low inflammation diet. Meat tends to be a very neutral food. A lot of people don't react to meat in the way that they would to other foods, especially if they're having histamine responses. If even carnivore is hard for you to tolerate, for example, if you have to eat freshly killed meat or just eat a gray steak or boiled meat so that you don't have any sort of Maillard reaction, it's very likely you have SIRS. That's not normal to have a histamine reaction to. Let's normalize eating food and not having histamine reactions to it. Like, let's not accept that as a normal thing that happens to people because it shouldn't be.
when I was diagnosed with SIRS, it was at the same time as my carnivore friend, Barbara, and we were so grateful to have each other for support through the entire process. We actually created the SIRSgroup.com. It's a supportive community of people who are healing from SIRS. There's a bunch of carnivores over there, so if you're interested in learning more or need emotional support as you go through your SIRS journey, join us over at thesirsgroup.com. If you or someone you love is going through SIRS right now, I just wish you so much love, peace, and healing through this time. I just, SIRS sucks, man. It is the freaking worst, and I really just want everyone to hear about it and know that it's an option for healing. Thank you so much for watching this video today, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, bye. <laughs>